Hey, this is Josh Junta for Love Science Music. I'm here at GSI Studios in New York City, and I'm going to explain to you how signal flow works in a recording studio. So I'm going to give you a little tour through the studio of how a signal flow travels from the live room to the control room and then what it does once it's here. But before I do that, let's talk about what is signal flow. Well, an acoustic sound, such as my voice speaking, becomes a signal when it gets converted to an electrical pulse. So for example, I speak into a microphone and that microphone, the capsule of the microphone, vibrates my voice, moving the air molecules makes the capsule vibrate. And then the microphone converts that vibration into an electrical signal. The electrical signal goes out of the microphone, through the cable, into the wall, and then through whatever pieces of gear I choose to send it to in the studio as the engineer. And then that signal after the gear gets put into the computer, which gets recorded into your recording software such as Pro Tools, Ableton, Logic, or whatever. All right, so let's pop into the live room and I'll show you how a signal first starts its path through the signal chain. Okay, so right now we're in the live room here in GSI Studios. And uh, I have a few mics set up here for a session we're doing tomorrow, but right now you're looking at a Telefunken U47. So our signal flow starts in the live room. The very first part of a signal flow is the actual musician or the instrument. So in this case, uh, you know, this microphone is going to be for a vocalist. So a vocalist starts the signal by singing something or saying something into this microphone. So the sound source speaks into a microphone, sings into a microphone. Sound waves actually make the capsule vibrate because the capsule is that sensitive to, to molecules moving around in the air. And then the microphone converts that vibration into an electrical signal. So it's converting acoustic energy into uh, electrical energy. That electrical energy gets sent out of the microphone through the mic cable. And in this case, the mic cable is going over here through this cabling into our next stop, which is the microphone panel. So every studio has a number of microphone panels. In GSI, we actually have a microphone panel in every room of the studio. So this is our main live room. This has uh, 24 inputs on this XLR panel. And then as you see over here, um, we have three booths right in front of me. Every booth has microphone panels so that you know we can put musicians in there for isolation. So this one, like I said, has 24 inputs, one through 24. And then this drum booth in front of me, which actually has a piano in it at the moment, has uh, picks up at input 25 and runs to input 40. So there's another uh, 15 inputs in there. Then the side booth, which you can't really see in that door, has another four inputs, 41 through 45, 45. And then this other booth over here in the corner has inputs 46 through 50. So the panels we have here, you can actually plug in a lot of different types of cables into that panel behind me. You can plug in microphone XLR cables like I showed you. You can also plug in instrument cables, which would be a guitar or a keyboard straight in. You can plug in a speaker cable if you want to run, say, a uh, guitar amp amplifier to a guitar speaker. You can plug in a DI, which is a balanced signal. Understanding signal flow is all about understanding inputs and outputs. You plug something in on one end and then it's going to come out somewhere else on the other. For example, the output of an acoustic sound, like me talking is output, right? Like you're hearing my voice, that's output. And then the microphone is capturing that input because the sound is going into the microphone. And then that microphone cable is plugged into the wall panel, that's an input. And then the wall panel is sending out into the control room. You'll never have a problem with signal flow if you just imagine and, and visualize in your head where the signal is going. It's coming from here and it's going to there and then it's going to there. It's basically just a chain uh, of, of a bunch of things you're linking together that keep passing the signal along until it gets to the computer where it's recorded. All right, so we're looking at our microphone input panel here in the live room again. And what's happening is all those microphones are plugged into the panel, as, as you can see right here. And basically, those signals are being sent into the control room um, underneath the floors. So there's a whole bunch of cabling inside this box we're looking at that um, goes underneath the floor of this room and the next room and pops out and goes to the patch bay. So let me show you what that looks like. 
Okay, cool. So we're back in the control room. Like I said, the signals are going onto the floor. And then if you look over here, see that massive snake cable coming out of the wall? That's basically the other side of that XLR panel, that the, the live room panel I just showed you. So that snake basically wraps around behind the console to the other side of the console. See it right there, that big snake. And then it, it basically goes into this unit right here. And every one of those channels from the other room has an individual cable that is connected to the patch bay. And the patch bay is basically a, it's like the air traffic control for the entire um, studio. So from here, you can send any, any signal to anywhere else. Every input, every output is labeled. It's very clean, it's very logical. So what you do from here is you take signals from the other room and you route them to the console or to outboard gear or to the tape machine. You can route them wherever you want. So a really helpful thing about the way this studio is set up is that when I plug in to say channel one in the other room on that panel I showed you, it automatically shows up here on channel one of the patch bay. And then without having to patch anything, that automatically is routed to channel one of the console. And then that channel one of the console is automatically routed to Pro Tools input one. So actually without any patch cables whatsoever, the, the signal is automatically routed from the microphone panel to channel one to Pro Tools one. That's pretty useful. So in that case, I only really need patch cables if I wanna route it somewhere in between or somewhere different than channel one. I might wanna route it to like say, one of these compressors right up here in the middle of the console or an EQ here on the side, outboard gear. So if I wanted to do that, I would patch uh, from the wall to say another preamp, preamp three maybe, and then to a compressor over here, and then I patch it back into Pro Tools. So in that way, you're kind of directing traffic with the patch bay. You're telling the signals where to go. You're manually telling the signals where they need to go. And the channel strip of the console actually has its own signal chain as well, which means that the signal goes um, through different parts of the channel strip in a certain order. So there's basically three parts to the, the order of a channel strip. The first part is what's called the preamp. And this little, it's boxed in here on both sides. This little unit is the preamp of this channel strip. What the preamp does is it takes the electrical signal that I mentioned. Remember your voice uh, goes into a microphone and the microphone converts it into an electrical signal. Well, that elect electrical signal is like really faint. It's really soft. It's not that loud. It's not that powerful. So you have to put it through a preamp and boost the volume of it and basically add a lot more juice to it, make it louder, make it audible, make it a more powerful signal for you to record. So that's what a preamp does. This here is the gain of the preamp or the volume. And this, this turns up the signal itself coming from the microphone. After the preamp, in within the channel strip, the signal gets sent out of the preamp up to the EQ of the preamps. If I wanna use it, I have to activate it and then I can you know, boost or cut frequencies up here. The output of the EQ is routed to the fader portion of the channel strip. So I like to think of it as like the preamp is the input gain and then the fader is like the output gain of that signal. The output gets sent to Pro Tools uh, by default. So channel one of the console is automatically routed to input one of Pro Tools. So all I have to do to hear this in Pro Tools is uh, take a channel on Pro Tools, an audio channel, um, set the input to input one and then press record and I should have the signal if I did everything right. So in order from a signal from your console or from your mic preamp to make it onto your computer screen, the signal needs to be converted from an analog signal, an electrical signal, into a digital signal, which is basically ones and zeros. That is the language of your, your computer. So the way that happens is this output um, before it hits Pro Tools, it has to go through an um, analog to digital converter, which is actually right here under the console. This is a uh, Symphony IO uh, 32 channel converter. Um, this piece of gear right here just converts um, analog signals to digital. So if you're, when you're recording into the computer, um, it's converting that signal. And also when you're um, taking signal out of the computer to your speakers, it is converting the digital output from Pro Tools 
uh, to the analog input that goes in your speaker so you can listen to it. So it does analog to digital conversion and then it goes digital to analog, it does both. One thing here at GSI Studios that is extra cool is that we have a tape machine. We actually have two, but the main one we use is the one here on the right, a Studer two inch tape machine, an A827. And this is also linked up to our patch bay and to our whole system here. Um, it, was, it was basically set up that way by our tech engineer so that we could like seamlessly record a tape and then in real time record from the tape to Pro Tools, which we do all the time. So the way we can put our tape machine in our chain is by using this here Elko system. This is like another um, basically smaller patch bay. So what we do here is we take, um, this is another input to output situation where um, this, this guy here is the output of our preamps from the console, I just showed you that. And the output of the preamp, you would patch that into the input of the tape machine. And these are big, uh, big inputs because this is actually 24 channels. This is all 24 channels you would send to the tape machine. So you go from uh, preamp output to tape machine input, and then this is tape machine input going straight into Pro Tools. So without any patch cables up here, I can just record straight from the microphones to the board, straight to the tape machine, which is pretty sweet. So I hope that's really helpful. That's the signal flow in this here studio. So it's all based off inputs and outputs. If you have an issue, if you're not getting sound, just mentally trace the signal path and you'll usually find somewhere where you made a mistake or somewhere where something is not operating correctly. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm happy to answer questions in the comment section and give me a like, give me a subscribe. Peace.